In the heart of the Yorkshire Hills, a handful of dealers have assembled, awaiting the delights facing them in the bidding room. Our five experts, who are all at the top of their trade, are French furniture and toy collector A.D. Estelle, who has an eye for retro 70s furnishings. Modern design lover Tash, plus James and Ian. They're primed to spend their cash, yet have no clue what items they'll be bidding on today. First into the bidding room is Sharon, with an undercover item that may get the dealers listening in. I got the item from my father. It's been in a box in the garage for many years. Before facing the dealers, Sharon will get an expert valuation from Simon, who's been in the auction business for three decades. The name's Bond. <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> and this is your box of tricks. What yes, that's, that looks like a spy set. It does, doesn't it? Yep. Sharon, hello. Where did you get it from? Um, I was given it by my dad. Was he a spy? Not that I'm aware of. No. no. Are you a spy? Maybe in secret. No, I'm not. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you played any of the tapes? Of I haven't touched it at all. Really? I wouldn't know where to start. Well, <laughs> we've got Simon here, who's an expert. Great. And funny enough, an expert in all things spying. Good. <laughs> Simon. That is great. And the one thing I was hoping to see, I've seen, and that's the, the model number there, which is the P55. Originally, these were made as just normal voice recorders. Right. They didn't really have the spec to record background noises and such. So they were literally just for, for speech. But the P55 was done purely for the espionage market. And I can date this one exactly to 1955. OK. Because that's when the P55 came, came out. out. Okay. Yeah. But it, I mean, it looks great. I love the fact we've got the original um, instruction manual, <laughs> which every spy <laughs> would spy. need. Yeah. Diagnosis of faults um, and little troubleshooters at the back. So that could have been used by a spy. Yeah, absolutely. That, was, that would be the design. And we've got all sorts of little bits in with it, of course. We've got some... Um, earphones there, we've got the adapter, and then we've got the telephone pickup. So presumably, if you're on the phone to somebody and you wanted to record them, you'd just have that there and it would record the, the conversation on the other end. Minifon is, is the brand name, if you like. Then Protona was, was, the, was the sort of the company, but they were a German manufactured. Right. Yeah, German manufactured. So great little thing, an original case. Not in the best of condition when no. we look at the top, but it's the original case, so, you know, I'd rather it there in that state than not at all. Well, now is the time to ask that question, Simon. How much is it worth? <laughs> well, Sharon's got a great, complete item. Well used, well loved. I can see it easily in that one to 200, uh -huh. um, but I see it probably to, nearer to the two than the one. So, you know, push 150, 200. That's good. Push the fact that it's 1955, and this model was made specifically for the espionage market. That builds a bit of mystique, doesn't it, don't you think? Yes, it does. Good luck. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much. I think you'll do well. Thank you. Bye-bye. I have a terrible urge to plug it in and <laughs> have a listen. Yeah. It could be booby-trapped. It could be. I thought of that. Yeah. Could self-destruct. Simon gave it a value of between 150 and 200 pounds, which I'm very happy with. And I'm hoping that I exceed Simon's valuation. Sharon, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to take on the dealers. Might this catch the eye of Curiosity's specialist James, or collector of the weird and wonderful Ian? Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Sharon. So where did this um, curious item come from? It was given to me by my father. I've had it for quite a number of years, tucked away. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ooh. And have you used it, whatever it no, is? No, 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 wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> you know what it's it is? It's very technical. <laughs> oh, OK. Have you got any idea what it is, James? So we've got, like, a stethoscope of some description. And we've got a label here saying dealing with various troubles should they arise. So <laughs> well, that could be anything. <laughs> that could be anything. Bring it over here, then. So this is obviously like a recording device of some sort, and you can rewind and play back. I'm pretty stumped, actually, so I'm going to think about it. Go on, Ian, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It's nothing to do with spying, is it, or anything like that? Yeah. Yay. Well done, Ian. Thank you. Now, I don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> the item is a mini phone. It was made in 1955 in Germany, and it was made for the espionage market. You say this belonged to your father? Yes. Was your father a spy? Not that he ever admitted to. No. Yeah, he wouldn't be, would he? <laughs> Roger, AD, AD, Alpha, Bravo, Echo, one, two, three, Echo, Echo. Double O, Ian, I'm afraid you're dismissed from your duties. Bye then. Self <laughs> bye, self bye, bye then. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we've had a bit of fun, and I think we need to start the bidding. The spy kit has been valued by Simon at 150 to 200 pounds. Time to see if Sharon can sell at that price. 20 pounds. I go 30. 40. 50. 55. I am out, but thank you. OK, thank you. Sharon? Yes. I'm out. OK. Thanks, thank though. Thank you. Miss Money, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never imagined myself as a part-time spy. I'm going to be out okay. at that, I'm afraid. So, Sharon, the bidding's with me at £55. Is there any more offers from any other dealers? Mm -mm. Would you accept my offer of £55? I would like some more. Um, I think it's a very novel item and I don't think you're going to see one complete again. The highest I could go is 60 And that is my final bid. James? Yeah, I think this is a bit of you. I really do. Because you're bonkers, and that is bonkers. Yeah. yeah I, I'm not going to disagree. You don't have to accept that offer, obviously, Sharon. Uh, but I will let you know, I will take it home, and I will read the instructions and try and get it working. <laughs> I appreciate your offer. Um, Simon did value it at much more. OK. Um, How much did he value it at? Between 150 and 200. I'm really? not going to stretch wow. to that, I'm sorry. <laughs> 80 pounds? 70 would be my absolute final offer, Sharon, sorry. OK. You accept? Yeah, if you promise me you're going to use it. <laughs> I'm going to try and get it working, because okay. I'm absolutely intrigued by it. I just think it's bonkers. Deal. Well done. Deal. Well done. Fantastic. Well done. Brilliant. I sold the mini phone for a little bit less than what I would have liked, but I'm still happy with what I got and it's been great fun. Come on then, Esther, let's see your best spy moves. Well, I'd like to think I was more of a Charlie's angel, Just really. Just do it. Get on with it. Let's have a look. I love this way. Next into the bidding room is Rhys from Wales, with a metallic piece he hopes will shine for the bidders. So, basically, the item is from the 1920s, and it's something that would be commonly found during an afternoon tea or something like that, something, something posh back from the 20s. <laughs> now, you see, the thing is, Simon, I would have got the old silver polish out and you would have killed me, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, yeah, but that's so difficult on something like that, isn't it? I do it with um, a little um, bud, you know. Oh, a little cotton bud. Cotton bud, yes. yes. Let's have a word with Reese. Where have you come from? I've come up from um, Cardiff, yeah, yeah. I love Cardiff. <laughs> so basically, me and my dad have been collecting silver for the last 10 years. Oh, right. And um, this is a present he gave me when I was about 12 or 13. Do you know anything about it? Do you, mean, you know what it is? Or... I know it's from the 20s. Um, I'm not sure who the maker was. OK. Well, then, let's ask Simon, our expert. <laughs> Simon, tell me all about this pretty little thing. Well, I can tell who is the, the, the maker straight away, cos we've got a, a sh little shield yeah. with CB and S, so CB and S, which is Cooper Brothers and Sons, which were quite well-known Sheffield silversmiths. It's what we call, obviously, a little fruit basket. So, yeah, solid silver throughout, pierced decoration. It probably would have been made on a single machine, which would have bent it up. When I last looked a few days ago, silver was about £15 an ounce. Oh, you know, so it's, it's absolutely shot up. I mean, there's a good... There's a good 12 ounces or so there. To work that out. Um, so it's about £180 just to chuck in a pot to melt. Wow. So this is already on a winner. Yeah. Just for the scrap value side of it. Yeah. I do think it's time to ask, how much do you think it's worth? 
Wel, gwerth drws nesaf i sych di o flaen y dealers fydd rhwng 200 a 200 anar. Brilliant. And which means? Which means 200 to 250, <laughs> with a lot of vowels. <laughs> That's fantastic, isn't it? That's brilliant. Push the fact, obviously, that it's solid silver. Sheffield 1924, and just a nice functional object. And, you know, push the fact that silver is at an all-time high, £15 an ounce at the minute. Fantastic. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> You can't go wrong with silver. No. One of the best things to invest in, I think, yeah. silver and gold, you know. Yeah, good advice. Simon and Nigel were really excited about the item. I was valued roughly around 200 to 250 pounds, which is exactly what I'm looking for. But it's great quality. I think dealers would love it. Hello. 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 So, what is your name? My name is Reese. Hello, Reese. Reese. Right, well, this looks really interesting, but. I think there is somebody sitting right at the end that might be chomping at the bit to look at this. Is it solid silver, Tash? Uh, yes, it is. We've got a Sheffield silver basket. Right. And we've got the hallmarks just on the side here. We've got a serial number at the base, which is um, we don't always get serial numbers as well. I buy um, lots of silvers from dealers and they're always trying to sell me the baskets. It's not really my thing, to be honest with you. They were fashionable about 12, 18 months ago. You couldn't get enough of them, especially the American markets wanted these. But it's, it's a nice dish. I like the fact that it is solid silver. It's in lovely condition. There's like no damage whatsoever. So that yeah. you've got that working in its favor. I like silver and the reason I like it is because I put it all into a little bag <laughs> and I take it to my little man. <laughs> and my little man puts it on a load of scales. Oh, no. And it gives me some money. It's a very functional item, though. You could decorate yeah, it no, with it some is, cherries. Yeah, no, it is. It's very cute. Side. Would you be really upset if it got melted down? Does the actual piece mean more to you than the money today? No, I need the money more than the item. That's you the need problem. the money more than the item. Yes. Okay. So, um, should we start the bidding? The 1920s silver fruit bowl is valued at 200 to 250 pounds, but with mixed reviews from the dealers, can Reese persuade them to pay more than the scrap metal value? of £180. It's, it's a little bit lost on me. I admire it, but it's not my bag, so I'm out, but thank you. Uh, so before anyone else goes out, it is a solid sterling silver basket. It was made nearly 100 years ago and is in absolutely great condition. And what's the price of silver today? So I've basically been told it's worth around £180 on scrap value to, for today's money. And obviously silver prices are at an all-time high at the moment. I'll go 100. I'll go 110. 120. 130. Tash, are you in or out? I'm out on this one, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah, I'm out as well because I just don't, I don't buy silver at all. So I guess it's just Estelle and AD. 140. 150. 150. Because I like you, 160. <laughs> oh, so if you didn't like me, what would it be? 170. I am actually going to go out at this point. And my final offer is 170. I'd like to say, though, my birthday is tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> so it's just an extra, an extra few, a few bob would be quite nice, I actually. Would, an extra five, you said? Oh, a bit more than that. Uh, what was that, 170? I'll give you 180 for it and that's it. Can't round it up to 200? No. OK, I'm happy to let it go at that. Okay. Wow, well yeah. done. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Coming to the bidding room was a great experience. It was a bit daunting in front of those dealers, but I managed to come out with the money I needed. So Reese doesn't quite push the dealers to Simon's lower valuation of £200, but he's still happy to strike a deal. And I'll be using that to invest in some more silver. So what are you going to do with it, Esther? Don't you want to use it at home with your macaroons? Oh, I could put me macarons in it, yeah. Mm. If all else fails, I can uh, sell it to Ian to put his uh, scones or his crisps in. Sounds fair. I'll give you 80 quid for it. <laughs> so come on, then. What's your best ever buy? Oh, there's a couple. I think my best buy is probably um, Ladderax units, mid-century sort of shelving unit that usually goes for 
hundreds of pounds and I got it for ten pounds. That was one of my best buys. Really? What's the best thing you've ever bought? My best buy ever, and this is absolutely serious, I went online one day and I typed in Rolls-Royce because I love Rolls-Royce. Oh, they're beautiful, I love them. And there was a 1989 Silver Spirit, um, full history, advertised for a £1,000. No way. Honestly, and it was mint. And I kept reading through and the guy said, I've had enough of it. It's been an absolute nightmare. The brakes have gone, I just want to go and buy a new one. First thousand pounds, buys it. And I bought it, had it recovered, and it's absolutely... I mean, it cost a bit to get it done, but... Yeah, uh, worth it, though. Best buy ever. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I, mean, I love buying stuff. The excitement is like no other when you find something you really want and you know what it is. You know, your heart just pounds, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And it's just like every time you go to a recont or you go to a boot fair or whatever, it's just that adrenaline. Always <laughs> chasing that next buy. <laughs> Third up are Veronica and her daughter Hannah with something that's done the rounds within the family. I got this item from my son. He said that me and my husband could have it, so we had it for about a year. Going into the evaluation room, we'd like to find out from Simon how much it's worth and where it originated from. I know what this is, you know. You do? Yeah, it's a shape I recognise instantly. Yep. Has he got the magazine rack underneath? <laughs> it does indeed, yes. For the, for the Radio Times? For the Radio Times, that'll be it, yes. I think we'd better bring in Veronica and Hannah. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. You brought in a lovely low coffee table. Yes. And tell me about it. It belonged to my son. He bought it online. Oh, right. He paid £220, I think it was. £220? He's moved house and it doesn't fit with his deco. OK. So he gave it to us and then we've decided that it's too low for us. When you get to a certain age, <laughs> that's, that's more difficult. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we asked Simon all about it. Yes, He'll please. He'll give us the lowdown. Once you've seen Urkel, you just instantly recognise the, the shape, the smooth, rounded edges, um, and these wonderful turned legs, and the nice spindle magazine rack that you referred to, Nigel. Mm. Drop down flaps on the end, uh, another little leg on a metal pole which comes out and supports it. And there you go, so you could adjust the size as you, as you wanted. Personally, I would put this at maybe 1960s, 70s, so it's a good 50, 60 years old. It's got a little bit of pat pattern now on it. Yes, it has. Well, I think it's had a coat of varnish at one time. Does it affect the price? It might do to a dealer, yes. It might knock it back a bit because they'll think of it as, well, well I've got to spend on having the varnish stripped off and, and having it repolished. I think the ladies have got a nice, honest piece to take next door to the dealers. I think it's about 180 to 220. But I mean, I think you might get a bit lucky and hit the 200 anyway. Okay. They need to push the fact that it's a household name. It's mid century furniture, which is in vogue and in fashion. But I mean, they'll all be interested, Nigel, to be honest, because they'll know exactly what it is. My fingers are crossed for you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Simon valued the table at £180. I was expecting round about £300, 350 But we'll just have to wait and see what happens now in the bidding room. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello, Hello ladies. Hello. Double trouble. Yeah. <laughs> mother and daughter. So, um... what's your names then, mother and daughter? I'm Veronica. And I'm Hannah. Hello. Veronica and Hannah, Hello. welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome. You. welcome. I didn't think it was a table. <laughs> you did. I knew that. it was a table. I had a fair idea what it was. What yeah. sort of table is it, Estelle? Uh, it's an Urkel table. I can see some kind of seams at each end. I think it does, does actually it do fold a thing? down. A drop leaf. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. You it's not a drop leaf, surely. You push, you push, mm. it, in. push it in and they go oh, down. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it is, they are useful. People go mad, mad, mad for Urkel and absolutely love it. For me, if I was going to sell it, I would have to have it completely stripped. OK. And then refinished to sell it. I'm going um, to come in there, because I think she's been really grumbly. I am. I actually quite like it. I shouldn't. What do you think, Ian? I, I have to say, I'm, I'm on your side. I've never seen a drop leaf version. No, I... Ever, not... ever, ever. So what did Simon say about this condition? He said he thought it had been um, varnished. I think it's really sweet. We think it's a very sturdy table. 
So let's start the bidding on this one then, guys. Who's going to kick it off? The revarnished condition has taken the shine off the coffee table for the dealers. So, Veronica and Hannah are going to have to push hard to reach Simon's 180 to 220 pound valuation. I think Estelle should kick us off. I would have to do a lot of work to it to get it to be sold to the right person for the right price, and based on that, I would start the bidding only at 50 pounds. I can feel daggers coming from <laughs> over there. <laughs> I've got to start somewhere. Like I said, I know there's a market for it, but I'd have to do a lot of work to it. OK. Well, because I'm not old enough to remember this <laughs> era, I'll go 60. And I'll do one bid of 70, and I'm, then I'm out. I'll do 80 pounds. Nope. 90. No. Nope. My final bid would be 100. No way. <laughs> Ladies, I'm out. Take the money and run, love. Oh. Oh, oh, done. I'm still in. Oh, sorry, I thought you would... I don't have to do any work to it, so I'll offer you 120. 130. <gasps> no, I want more than that, please. Uh. A lot more than that, please. You did get an ooh, though, before the <laughs> I did get an ooh. I noticed that. <laughs> I do like an ooh. The market out there is quite strong, if you're advanced. I'll offer you 150. Sorry, no, I still want more. I'm afraid I'm going to bow out. I, I really liked it when it took the cover off, but I'm sorry, I'm going out. Thank okay. you very much. But thank you. Yeah, I admire its style. I think it's great, but I'm out again because I did come back in on a matter. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, I'm going to ask you, what is the lowest price you'll be prepared to leave this table here in the centre, in this rug, and to walk out the door? 250 is my lowest. 250? Yes. OK. Well, I'm not going to... Bid that high, I'm afraid. No, that's fine. You wouldn't take anything lower than that. No. Fair enough. That's strong money for what it is, and I hope you find a buyer because it is worth that to a fan yeah. who would want it in that colourway. So Thank you. Appreciate hopefully, that. you'll get a buyer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've had an amazing day and we've learnt a lot about the table. We were a little bit disappointed with the result in the dealer's room and um, we didn't get the price we were hoping for, so we've walked away with our, our lovely item. Next in is Mashid, with some cultural art she hopes to steer the dealer's way. The object that I brought today is wooden and it's very delicate and it's got really nicely carved designs in it. That is a crocodile, isn't it? Absolutely. And that is a... No mistake. Not a spear. It. No. No, I think it would be more for... Yeah, oh, God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Let's ask Mashid to come in. You've got something wonderful here. Where did you find it? It's a gift from my sister. Really? Yes. What a lovely sister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything about it? I think it's African. I don't know if it's been used for something, but I have a feeling probably it's a decorative object or yeah. ceremonial. Right. Well, we have Simon here, who's an expert. I'd love to know that. Do we know? It is a paddle, is it? Yes, it, 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 you're quite right. It is, it, the form is of a paddle. Quite right again with African. I'd say probably the, the Niger Delta, so Nigeria. These were used as ceremonial pieces, basically. Quite often in, um, in dances, because water in Nigerian culture is pretty important. Yeah. Not just for the water spirits, but for the the opportunities for trade, communication. So water was, was very important. And the crocodile, of course, I guess you'd call him the king of the water, really, wouldn't you? I think you? so. The, he um... was the, the boss man. Um, but I, I, I love all the detail. That's the way they've carved the crocodile's belly. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Amazing. Um, I love all this, what we call chip carving. So that's sort of just chipped away like that. I, I do see them quite frequently at auction. Do you? A, a lot of them were made not only for ceremony purposes, but also for the Western market. So for tourism, basically. OK. Um, but museum pieces, yes, they would have been the early ones, probably from the uh, early 19th or even 18th century. Mm. Whereas this one is more of an early 20th century, but looking back to the patterns of the past. Wonderful. Thank you. 
but great decorative items and a nice example of African tribal art. Yeah. I think the dealers next door will go to... If we can paddle them along to round about... I reckon 100, 150 is my opinion. Okay. Points to take next door, Mashid, are that it's... I think it's early 20th century. Um, classic ceremonial paddle in the form of a crocodile and um, just a lovely piece of tribal art. Yes. Thank you very much for your help. A, a great pleasure to meet you and you've got a lovely object and I think you're going to do really well. Brilliant. Thank great. you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I hope she gets a bit more for it. Simon has given me some facts about uh, the paddle, so I'm going to be using that in front of the dealers to see if I can bring the value up. Time for Mashid to head to the bidding room, where she'll meet a new lineup of dealers, including mid century specialist Moses, retro enthusiast JB, and decorative collector Melissa. Hello. Hello. Wow. Hello. Hello. And what's your name? My name is Mashid. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank to meet you. you. Hello, Mashid. So, where on earth did you get this item from? I got it as a gift from my sister. Come on, JB, you're itching to get up. <laughs> I'll have a peek. So, where did he say your sister acquired it from then? She got it from a car boot sale. Yeah. Wow. That in a car boot sale. Wow. That was an amazing find. I would yeah. love to find that in a car boot sale. <laughs> so tell me, is it a, a spear, a paddle? It is a paddle. Do you think it isn't, Moses? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking um, if it's a paddle, why has it got holes? Yes, true. I think, though, it's just a, dec it's yeah. just a decorative, decorative piece, isn't it? It would have never have been used. And it's all hand-carved there, and you've got, like, a crocodile end. Date-wise, these things are really hard to date. I'd probably say this is mid-20th century. I don't think it's that early, maybe even to late 20th century. And it's definitely made for the, the tourist market rather than actual tri a tribal item. Um, it's a nice decorative piece, definitely. From what Simon told me, it's a paddle. Okay. And he thinks that this is from early 20th century. But it's definitely a piece of um, art for ceremonials but might be uh, made for tourists. And it's definitely based on a ceremonial piece, isn't oh, yeah, it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because the crocodile would have been some kind of... It would have been a prayer to the crocodile, look after me, don't, don't eat me, something like that. Did he say that, anything? That's how I feel about it, actually. I think because African tribes are appreciated water so much, it's very sacred over there, and crocodile is the king, obviously. Anybody who wants to pass the water has to pass the king, so... So it's, uh, it's bringing life and it's sacred for them as well. Love it. I think it's beautiful. I wonder if it'll protect me from 80s snap. Nope. <laughs> I think it's a hugely decorative piece. I think right now everyone's looking for something to make the interior look a bit more exciting. So we bring in a few talking pieces, we call them. And I think this is a talking piece. Especially with the crocodile on the end. I love the crocodile. Yes. You love the crocodile. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a really nice piece. A little, little bit of skill has gone into producing it. So, shall we start the bidding? The hand-carved paddle is valued at 100 to 150 pounds. Over to Mashid to try to persuade the dealers to buy at that price, or even higher. I start at 40 pounds. 50. I'm sorry, on this occasion, I'm out. I'll let you know where I am very quickly. You probably recognise me from Crocodile Dundee, so I am the original, <laughs> and I fight crocodiles on a daily basis, um, so I don't need this. So, I'm out. Sorry. I am also out on this one. I say, it's not quite my cup of tea. As much as it is quite nice and there's a good little story with it, isn't for me on this occasion. Appreciate it. Doesn't leave very many. 40 50. Over to you. It's not what I actually collect, but I'll put another five in. 55. That's, the, that's probably the best I can do on that. 
I'll give you 60. No, that's it. I'm out on that. I think it's worth more than that, um, considering the, the time and effort that has been taken into it. Will you accept my offer? No. <gasps> no! <gasps> Simon valued this from 100 to 150 pounds. Which, which is perfectly fair if you're going to use it to decorate your home. Well, if, you, if we were selling it, we'd sell it at that price, but we wouldn't buy it at that price. What about 70? Uh, a bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good price. Do you know what? £70 is my final offer. I've already bidded 10 over what I've bid before, and that's it. Will you take it? OK. Oh, oh, brilliant. brilliant. Excellent. I'm so happy. happy. I sold the paddle for £70, which was less than what it was valuation. But Lucy loved it, so I'm sure it's going to be in a good place. It's going to live in my home for a while before it goes anywhere else, but I do stage interiors, so it will look amazing in some homes. Promise Thank you. you. I'll look I'm sure it will take the spirits to your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she decides to sell to Lucy for £30 under Simon's lower valuation of £100, but she still heads home happy. I had a very good time. Thank you. Last seller in is Tim. With an industrial discovery, he hopes can draw in the bidders. The item I brought today, it's a cast iron base. It's got a solid wooden top. It's an intriguing item. I just want to know a bit more about it. <laughs> so tell me about this, Simon. Well, it's got to be an architect's drawing board, hasn't it? I think it can't be anything else. No. It? My question, though, Simon, is why? Why? Doesn't and I think we'll have to find the answer from Tim. Welcome to the bidding room. Why did you buy it? I, I didn't. I got it as part of a job lot. Oh. Um, I empty factories and... You do that for a living? Yes, I you do, You sort yeah. of walk in and just rip it all out? That's it. What I do is I go into a factory or a workshop, make an offer on everything that's in there. And then you sort of set it off? That's it. But I'm hoping that you guys can shine a well, bit more light on exactly that. exactly why you're here. Yeah. Because we have an expert on these sort of things. Tell me all about it, Simon. Tim's got a great bit of kit, I think, you know? Cast iron base, as, as we know. Can't get much more solid than that. No. But the earlier versions of these, before we went, got to Industrial Revolution time, were all wooden, all mahogany. Oh, right. But they would have been in the gentleman's library and things like that. Right. Obviously, you would have had your blueprints and papers on there, and then you'd move this up and down, obviously, to do your measurements and adjustments and all the rest of it. Date-wise, I think this probably dates early 1900s. 1920s, maybe 30s, something like that. Wow. But still in, you know, great working order, isn't it? I think it could do with a lick of paint, iron. personally. Well, I don't mind that, you know. I know you I don't. I don't mind that. I'd, I'd get rid of this. What's behind it? Let me have a look at that. So, yes. we've got the original pine there. So, I mean, you could stain that, couldn't you? Like yeah. a dark stain yeah, to yeah. it. Clean all that up. Flip it level. Nice serving table, maybe, do you reckon? <laughs> 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 I get it. Unless, unless you got rid of the board completely. I have an idea. Go on. It's really good. Is it? I think it could be. Just come to you now. It's just come to me now. This is exactly about the shape of a, of a flat screen television. Ooh. You mount your TV on this, <laughs> Bob's your uncle. What do you think of that idea, flat screen TV? I don't like it, Nigel. Don't I'm, you? No, I think it should be kept in the century that it's in. It's... Um, I'm crushed. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm just an idiot, really, I know. <laughs> I think Tim's got a, a great item to take next door. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it grabs your attention, there's no doubt, isn't there? And do you know what? I, I think in front of the dealers, Tim can push them, especially with that background story, easily to 120, 150, but you might be able right. to push them on. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I will be, yeah. I mean, yes. we'll, we'll try and push them for a bit more when yes. we get in there, but... Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Really? I really enjoyed seeing this. And I still think my flat-screen TV idea is pretty good. I know you don't like it. No, I'll leave that one with you. Leave that one with yeah. me. I'm a Philistine, I know that. But anyway, thanks for coming. Brilliant. Tim. Thanks good very much. Good luck room. Oh, great guy, wasn't he? Great guy. I hope he does well. If we just drop this down, you see, and then you could rest the screen. You know, it's a way of doing it. Yeah, no, I'll see where yeah. you're going. 
It's almost identical to a sort of 70 inch, isn't it? Or mm. you could have a smaller one. Anyway, just me. It went really well in the valuation room. I think it's given me a bit more ammo. I've got a better idea of what sort of money I'm lucky to get for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Hi, guys, you all right? Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello mate. What, what's your name? Tim. Right, this looks a bit of fun. Where did you get this from? I'm a machine tool engineer and I empty a lot of factories out for people. And this was hiding behind a curtain. Do you want to reveal it? Can do, are you ready? Can't wait. Can't wait. Smile. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Brilliant. That is really, really lovely. I reckon that's some kind of drawing table, an architect's easel. You were right there, it's an architect's drawing board. With the mm. treadle at the bottom to adjust it. What a great thing. Can I ask, is that very heavy? It's extremely Extreme. heavy and I had to put it in, in van by myself this morning so I know exactly how heavy it is. It doesn't come apart at all? Uh, it does come apart, yeah. When, yeah. when I actually found it, it was, it was in pieces. Right. So I didn't actually know what it was until I, until I properly built it up. Do you know what age it is? It's between 1920s and 1930s. Mm. Now, I thought it were more mid-century, but mm. I've been wrong once before. What's the metal? What's it made of? Uh, it's a cast iron base and it's a solid wood table on it. Can we just reverse a little bit? Because I've got yeah. one pretty much exactly the same as that yeah. that I've had for two years and I've still not put it together because yeah. I cannot figure out how it goes together. It's 50 quid an I hour think I'm, will be there. I think I'm, I was just about to say, how much do you want to come and put one together? <laughs> it took me two weeks, so I'm not your man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gutted, gutted. Yeah. So does the height adjust on it because... Even in these heels, I could not reach that drawing board. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm vertically challenged myself, so I know how to do So you can adjust the height up and down that way, and when you stand on the pedal, you can adjust it e either way to, to make you comfortable for whatever it is you're doing with it. Do you know anything else about the person you bought it off? It was a, an engineer from Yorkshire who actually built his own steam engine called Sweet Pea that he used to ride round his, uh, his garden in Leeds. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that absolutely yeah. fact? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I love yeah. that. He's actually published his own book on how to build these steam locomotives. Wow. 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 I like it. Do you know the guy's name? Jack Buckler, I believe Jack was his Buckley. name. Yeah. Do you have proof that it came from that famous Yorkshire engineer? Yes, I do, yeah. I can, I can get information from his, his family. I'm in close contact with the family. So that, that shouldn't be a problem. You can just imagine it, where you got it from and with the provenance that you've said as well, like with the huge bits of paper drawing his locomotives on there, pens, pencils everywhere. Yeah. It's got a really nice story. Really nice story. You can almost smell it. Yeah, you? yeah. Smell yeah that, that industrial smell. This is right up my street because my partner would absolutely adore this. She's an artist and we've been looking for one for a long time just to take my poker face off. Good, good. So what are you going to do with the money if you sell it to us today? I've, I've got a baby on the way, so it's, the majority is going to go on nappies, I believe. <laughs> are you allowed to leave without selling it? Uh, I'd rather not put it back in the van on my own if <laughs> I <I'm laughs> right, so if, if you can buy it, that'd be great. That's, that's very encouraging. Mm. Right, we all love it. Who's going to start the bidding then? The architect's drawing board has been valued at 120 to 150 pounds. The item has the wow factor. So, can Tim engineer a good deal? Right, I'm going to start the bidding. I'm going to start the bidding at 320. Wow, that's oh. a bit fresh. 350. 380. Are you just showing off? <laughs> no, I just, it, we you know it's going to get there. Mm. 400. 420. Mm. 430. 440. 450. Alyssa? I'll go 460 on it. 470. Where are you at, Moses? Heart or head? <laughs> head or heart? Heart. Always heart. <laughs> <laughs> my heart would say way more than what you're bidding, but my head, it's got a... I'm sorry, I'm out. If, if everyone could just use the hearts, then that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, guys, as well, it did come from a talented Yorkshireman, so that's got to be worth a bit more, sure, will I? I look, this is right up my street, but um, I'm going to say that I'm out of that, but thank you, mate. Thank you. At the price it's at, I am out. Thank you. I'm really sorry I'm out. OK, thank you. Right, Tim, 
It's a 470 with me. Yep. Do we have a deal? If you can stretch up to 500... No. Nope. We've got a deal. No. Nope. Not having it. 490. 470. Come on, idiots, for your partner. 470. 480. Tim, I think 470 is a fab offer. I was going to go nowhere near that. Well, I think I'll end up single if I don't accept your offer. So I'll, I will go for that. Thank you. Fantastic. It went really well with the dealers. They, they were all interested in the item. I ended up getting £470. I'd really love to know the valuation, though, wouldn't you? No. Simon valued it at 120 <gasps> to 130 what? pounds. Wow! Yeah, that's right. That's a lot lower than I thought it was going to be, but it makes absolutely no difference because my partner is going to absolutely love it. Brilliant. So with the money that I've received today, it's most likely going to be spent by my partner, but it'll all be for a good cause for the new baby. So great day overall. Just so you know, though, mate, that's too heavy. I'm not helping you with that. Really? Yeah. Tim! Tim! Hope he's not gone. Tim, you need my address for delivery, mate. Delivery? Kent. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Well, lady, it looks like you're going to have to go back to the drawing board with that one. Oh, dear. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, <laughs> cringe. Funny.